Hey everybody, Brett from Stardew's Gaming here, back with another episode of our Expeditions Viking Let's Play. So, uh, in the last episode, we returned back home just to sort of uh, check in and uh, see how Nephia's sister was doing. Um, off camera, I went ahead and I dropped off a bunch of our valuables because we had like, I think it was upwards of 12,000 valuables, almost 13, maybe even 14. Um, but basically, you can deposit them in increments of 10,000 and that boosts your clan's prosperity. So I went ahead, um, stopped by our house and gave my mother um, a bunch of valuables. So we're down to about you know 2,700 now. But uh, <clears throat> our clan prosperity should be up pretty considerably. We don't have any wood unfortunately, so we're gonna need to keep an eye out for wood. But uh, I told you guys today we were gonna be checking out Orkneyar. So that's what we're going to do, and then from there we're going to head to uh, Perth and talk to the Picts. So uh, let's be on our way. Is this not going to listen? Oh, I, I keep thinking that uh, right click is interact. I don't know why. I think I've been playing. Um, I've been playing a bunch of uh, Dragon Age Inquisition lately, and interact is right click in that game. So um, maybe that's why. All right, so there we are in Skirn, and we need to head up to here, to Orkney R. And that's going to take us, it looks like, two full days. Um, what's happening here? Sunrise and sunrise, okay. So maybe even three full days? Uh, let's go for it. All right, so I clicked the wrong thing. Uh, here we go, traveling to Orkney R. But yeah, I've been playing a bunch of Dragon Age Inquisition lately, and I don't like Dragon Age for the most part, but I'm actually enjoying Inquisition quite a bit. Um, let's see, as morning approaches, you notice that another ship is slowly gaining on you. It's still only a small silhouette on the horizon, and ahead of you, fog banks are hugging the calm waters like a blanket. Uh, let's try to lose them in the fog. Unless... Hmm... It could be somebody from home trying to catch up to us, but it could be an enemy from Denmark trying to catch up to us. We're not exactly in a warship, so this could be bad. I'm curious, though. When the other ship catches up, it's clear that you're dealing with another Norse longship, and you recognize the sail as the colors of a clan allied to yelling. Uh, as soon as the other ship is within arrow range, they begin to pelt the Akapit with projectiles. Uh, Ulfric and Asleif are both hit by the volley. Your own herd quickly rallies and returns the favor. Judging by the splashes of the bodies hitting the water, you clearly pick off a few of them before the enemy crew seems to decide it's not worth it. Ah, uh, that sucks. So they turn quickly and flee. I guess I should have seen that coming. But it, I assume we're just going to have some wounds on Ulfric and Asleaf that we'll have to patch up when we camp. Four injured? How did that happen? Let's see, uh, you. What's going on with you? Severe arm puncture. Who else is wounded? Uh, apparently you've got a light head infection, I don't know where that happened. You have a moderate chest puncture, and she's got a groin puncture and a chest infection. Great. Come on. There we go. Okay, I'm going to run with our usual crew here, because, again, most of these, like, most of my created characters are specced with, like, one thing in mind, so he's pretty much only good for crafting. Um... Let's see, she's only good for healing. And then, like, this guy could rotate in for, like, Azleif. He's spec similar to Azleif, but, uh, yeah. I'm trying to get his morale up. I don't like it being so low. Uh, not you. Where is Kettle? There he is. <clears throat> Alright, here we are. So as soon as your feet find purchase... Half a dozen haggard-looking warriors come running down the cliff. From their clothes and their weapons, you identify these people as Northmen. Uh, the man at the front is, in, is short and wiry, but with strong forearms. You estimate him to be somewhere in his early 30s. He walks with his shoulders drawn up like he spent his entire life in a gale. So I'm curious, when it says Northmen, I assume that they mean um, 
from like Norway because I imagine that they would refer to Danes as Danes or you know at least being from Denmark where Northmen implies somewhere higher up in Scandinavia at least to me so I would think that they are you know possibly Swedes but more likely um, from Norway Norwegians uh, I'm Stein the Clever of Rogaland. Uh, I control this island. Who are you? My name is Hakon Carson. Uh, you, if you need a place to stay while you prepare for a longer journey, you're welcome to camp here. But tell me, why have you brought your ship to my beach? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, we can basically just declare war on him right here. We can ask him to fight against the kingdoms of Britannia. So I think if you're going for, like, conquer everything, this is your option. If you're going to try to conquer both um, Northumbria and um, Pictland, this is, this is your option. Um, we were going for, like, a slightly more peaceful trade approach, so I think we'll probably go with this one. And then uh, a friendly hearth to rest. Yeah, I, I've come seeking trade partners. He chuckles darkly. You should take a look around this place, brother. There's nothing here to trade unless your clan is experiencing a dangerous shortage of rock. We're barely pulling enough fish out of the sea to last us through the winter. The only purpose this island serves is as a staging ground for raids. He glances back at his crew. Their expressions are difficult to read behind their helmets, but he must know them well. Mug of mead, you say? Why not? Come then, join us for our midday meal. Well, see, that's the thing. If they're staging raids here, then we could trade them supplies and they could give us valuables that they're getting through the raids. At least that would make sense to me. But uh, apparently not to him. So, uh, what's the key? Alt, okay. In uh, Dragon Age V, highlights stuff, so I gotta remember that too. At least they're in similar places. Uh, I can't talk to any of these people, so let's squeeze past them. And let's see, can I loot any of this stuff? Looks like I can. Ooh, four cloths. Oh, at least these are all separate. Medicine, that's what we need. Some more wood, yeah, we need that too. I've been looting everything I've come across so far, but... Uh, oh, no, that's, that's stealing, don't do that. Obviously, <laughs> we're having a hard time coming up with wood. Because I want to be able to do some more upgrades to our... Uh, to our you know village but not really uh, coming through so far more cloth I don't need cloth I need wood I need wood I need hides and I need uh, salvage that's a hydrate right? no that's a door <laughs> I thought that was one of those uh, like leather stretching racks but yeah while I'm uh, looting all this stuff. So, Dragon Age... My biggest issue with Dragon Age is that, one, I, I'm not a huge fan of high fantasy. There are ways to do high fantasy right, and I don't think that Dragon Age does that. Um, for example, I would call... Like, The Elder Scrolls, I would say, is probably high fantasy. Um, Warcraft is high fantasy. But both of those have, like, a... a grit to them in the way that they're presented. More so The Elder Scrolls than Warcraft. But Warcraft still at least to an extent, but <clears throat> the Elder Scrolls, at least in the games, and especially in like Skyrim, um, is very like dirty and gritty, and it's presented more like low fantasy, even though you have like several races of elves and wizards with magic and, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's not like, um... Well, I, see, the thing is, I'm not super familiar with the books, but Game of Thrones, the TV show, that's, like, low fantasy, because you you do have elements of fantasy in there. There is magic present. It's just not, like, omnipresent. Or it, it could be, but it's not a huge part of the world all the time. You know, you don't have... There are people capable of magic, or at least it would seem that way. Like, the... The Red Lady, um, you could argue, has some elements of that, but uh, 
it's not like there's, you know, like wizards running around throwing fireballs at each other. Same could be said for like Lord of the Rings. You know, Gandalf is a wizard, but he's not throwing fireballs out of a staff. He's usually using his staff as like a blunt weapon and fighting with a sword. So again, you know, high fantasy, but maybe presented more like low fantasy. And that's where I think Dragon Age goes wrong. It's, I don't know, it's, it's too high fantasy for me, but I can see how some people might enjoy that. My other gripe with it, is I don't really like the art style. Most of the armors in that game, to me, look entirely ridiculous. And then, uh, finally, I really don't like the idea of MMO combat in a single-player RPG game. To me, there's no real excuse for it, but at least in Dragon Age Inquisition, um, the, the combat is like good MMO combat. They've refined it enough to be somewhat enjoyable. It's just... I prefer like Skyrim or Elder Scrolls style combat where it's skill based in the sense that you have to aim your shots with the arrow, you have to time your sword swings and your shield blocks and things like that. In Dragon Age it's skill based in the sense that you press 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, whatever hotkey uh, and a skill happens. So I don't really enjoy that. Again, to me that's like MMO combat when you have like 20 players on screen and you can't exactly rely on being able to time stuff properly, but uh, it's it's a fun game. Um, I really didn't like any of the other Dragon Ages I've played, but so far I'm actually you know really enjoying this one. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. Uh, a weather-bitten man with a thick, dark beard streaked with gray stands up and brushes breadcrumbs off his tunic. Uh, so you didn't manage to wrest control of Orkniar away from Stein. I'm sure you'll get another chance soon if you want it. Uh, if you ask me, Stein seems thoroughly tired of the responsibility. Uh, my name is, uh, actually, no, just, and you are? I'm Karung, uh, honored to make your acquaintance, your acquaintance, Thane Hakon. Um, where are you from? I hail from Agder, the closest of the northern kingdoms to where you're from, or so I've heard. Okay. So, yeah, they are, they are from, like, Norway or Sweden. Uh, a lot of ships come up our coast on the way between Vestfold or Alvheim and Hordaland or Rogaland. So it's a good place for a merchant, but uh, or but lately uh, competition had gotten a bit fierce. Up there there's no competition at all, so I'm doing well. What are you selling? Whatever the ships bring in that's useful. Here, take a look. Okay, so what do you have? It looks like you have quite a few herbs. Uh, very low supply, very high... Oh, my hides are in high demand. Um, so, let's see here. I don't think that he's got a good supply of anything. So, th we're going to be spending a lot to get very little. It says he has fair prices, though, but given supply and demand, I just, like, anything other than valuables, I don't see us getting a great deal for Salvage. Apparently we can sell salvage for quite a bit. So maybe I'll trade salvage for uh, hides. I think that's, that's probably a good idea. I'll give you 40 salvage for 4,000 valuables. And then I will... Oh, he's not willing to trade that. Oh, wait, no, that's just because I didn't have it highlighted properly. And then I'll spend a thousand of what we just got on all the highs that he has. I don't know. That's a really good deal for salvage. Maybe I should take advantage and buy some more. Like... Okay, so that's all he can afford. Yeah, you know what? That'll put us down under 100, but I don't really need those for anything else. Uh, you just use them for weapon crafting, which um, is not super necessary in this game because you end up looting plenty of uh, like legendary or rare named weapons anyways, and everybody in my party has either a really good legendary weapon or uh, I've crafted them the best possible weapon already, and I'm never going to need to upgrade them, so that looks good. And then obviously these are easier to come by. 
uh, than like hides are, for example. Cool. So, good good place to turn. Um, I thought that was Stein. Where did Stein lock off to? Maybe over here. Yeah, he's got to be in the longhouse. Stein leads you into a, a low cabin built out of large rocks of granite. A longhouse, this is not, but it's fairly cozy. Uh, one of his men brings in a soup of fish and root fruits. Interesting. Uh, along with some reasonably fresh bread. Your respective herd eats in the other buildings, so you and Stein have plenty of space. Uh, so you're from the south, I take it. Uh, Geetland? That would be Sweden. So they must be Nor Norwegian then. We are Danes. Uh, so yeah, we're from a place called Skirn in Jutland. Uh, what of you? Where is this Rogaland? Uh, Stein allows a glimmer of melancholy, presumably caused by homesickness, to show through in his voice. Uh, it's a kingdom between Hordaland and Agder, right across the sea from here. It's a beautiful country of billowing mountains cut through by deep blue fjords. Yeah, it's gotta be Norway. Uh, in the summer, the sun flows through the mists here like ribbons of gold, and melted ice trickles down the mountains in a hundred thousand small streams. In the winter, the snow turns those mountains into clouds of shimmering light, and the fjords freeze almost to the bottom. Hmm. Sounds like a rough place to live. It is, it's a harsh country. Even the plants are rugged, stubborn things. You don't realize what home means to you until you're away from it. Hmm. Uh, I just left my home, but sure. I know the feeling. I'm starting to miss mine quite a bit. Uh, Stein has bright blue eyes that seem to keep smiling, even when the rest of his face reverts to a more neutral expression. So you're home. Skirin, was it? You're the Thane there? How did that come to pass? Uh, my father was Thane before me. He met his end on these islands. There were other challengers, but I won the right to succeed him. You said your name was Carson? I think your father's ship may have been by here. He had his brother with him, name of Grimolf? That's right, you met him? Uh, Grimolf, yes, but not your father. The ship had a skeleton crew, just five men led by Grimolf. They mentioned that the ship belonged to Carr, uh, to a Carr, but something had gone wrong and they were headed home. So they hit, they hit this place up on the way back then. Um, Grimolf sold me his axe in return for supplies and lodging. It's a fine weapon. If you see him again, please pass on my regards. Um, apparently we can't mention that he's dead. Yeah, we know he's dead at this point. We Not only have we seen him in Valhalla, but um, we've seen his grave. So, uh, yeah, I'll just say this. Uh, I will. He stayed behind in Skir, and it seems he's had enough of raiding. Stein snorts, generating a small disturbance on the surface of his suit. Can't say that I'm surprised. It seemed they'd suffered quite the series of disasters, though they refused to talk about it in detail. If you think you might have need of his axe, I'll be happy to sell it back to you. It's a fine weapon, but I fight best with a light weapon in each hand, and that axe is too big to use in one hand. Is it a Dane axe, then? I don't really want a Dane axe. Um, let's see. If you've been here long enough to have met Grimmelf, that must mean that you've met Skull's, School Skull Cleaver as well. Once, last summer, he came here with three ships, laden with lumber, meat, salt, and other supplies. He seemed to get along quite well with the crew of Gunnar the Peaceful. Uh, speaking of which, uh, did my eyes deceive me back there, or was that Gunnar on your ship? Um, it was him. He's part of my herd now. Stein scratches the back of his neck with a sheepish grin on his face. How in the name of Odin did you recruit him? The man's a legend here. Hmm. He and his crew attacked my clan. We fought him in one, and I offered to spare him for his service. You beat Gunnar the Peaceful? If that's true, you and your warriors must have no equal. Uh, I'll have to ask him about it later. Anyway, I was telling you about the Skull Cleaver. We bought most of Skull's cargo, and he set out towards the east from whence he came. Uh, he left one of his ships here, under the command of a woman, which sailed southwest a few weeks later. Uh, this is Hrodgerda, definitely. Can you describe this woman? Yes, she too made me, or made quite the impression on me. 
I would say she closely matched my expectations of what it might be like to meet uh, hell in the flesh. She made strong advances on me, but I frankly got the impression that certain parts of my body weren't likely to survive the encounter, so I politely kept my distance. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, Alright, I think we've gotten to know each other quite well. Let's talk about how I might gain the allegiance of you and your people. I don't really have any desire to stay in this place, which is the only reason I'm not just, like, conquering it from him. Uh, he seems to honestly consider that for a good while, then he leans forward, resting his elbows on the tabletop. Alright, the way I see it, there are two ways we can do this. First option, you hire us. Honestly, you seem to know what you're doing, and you seem quite determined to do it. My crew and I didn't come here to enjoy the good weather, we're here for gold and glory. Uh, you can purchase our services for a hundred or two of silver per head, and 400 on top for the ship. Um, that is a lot. The Unblock is a hell of a steed, and her crew is as experienced as any you'll find. If you hire us, I'll throw in Orkney R for free. Of course, you may not be keen to part with your silver. That brings us to the second option. We fight. Uh, you and your people against me and my people. We'll go to the cliffs outside right now and see who fights best. If you win, you have my allegiance. If I win, you piss right off. Hmm. Well, I don't have any choice because I don't have enough silver. So, let's see, what's this say? I don't have that much silver or anything else of equivalent value, but I'm willing to leave Orkney R in your hands until I can afford to hire you. Okay, so I can defer to later or I can fight him. Let's fight him. I don't, I don't see us losing. Uh, he shrugs and you think you see a hint of disappointment in his eyes. As you wish, I will prepare my crew for a fight. You just said you weren't here for, you weren't here for the weather, you're here for glory. Alright guys, so we are going to go to whatever hill he was talking about and fight them, but we'll have to do that in the next episode because we are out of time. So uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, I had a great time playing some Expeditions Viking with you, and look forward to seeing you guys back here for the next episode.